Hi, my name is Josu Lai. I'm a Partner Solution Architect in AWS. Today I'm with Ryan, who is the Head of Applications and Data from Kalent. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Tell us about Kalent. So Kalent is an all-in AWS Premier Partner. We help our clients modernize and maximize their use of the AWS platform by combining our data, AI, application development, and infrastructure teams. I see. So today we want to talk about a solution architecture that you are team built for database modernization. Would okay. you like to start with which customer challenges you are trying to solve? Sure. So legacy proprietary databases over time become technical debt for organizations. Both the licensing cost and the infrastructure maintenance require lots of upkeep and dollars from their team. Okay, it's true. Because uh, migrating the databases across the platform require times and extensive knowledge. That's right. It's not only knowledge of the current database platform, but if you want to move off of that database platform, it requires knowledge of two different database platforms. And that's something very rare. Now at Kalent, we do hundreds of database migrations every year. We have some of those go across database platforms. And so we have those folks on staff, but most of our migrations end up going lift and shift, staying on the same platform because of the complexity required and the investment that organizations have to make. For instance, there's features that are available on one database platform like Microsoft SQL Server's table valued parameters that are often used that aren't available on other database platforms. For instance, moving to Postgres SQL on Aurora, and that ends up with a complex transformation required, not just porting the code from one platform to the other. Okay, can you give us some example? Yeah, for sure. So. Many customers across many industries have this exact problem, but this particular one was on Microsoft SQL Server, and they were paying a very large and growing licensing bill for the instances that they ran. And because of that, what they wanted to do was convert their 2,500 stored procedures onto PostgreSQL, and run that on the Amazon Aurora platform. And in order to do that, what they did was they used the schema conversion tool, which is provided by AWS to all customers free of charge, to analyze their database and figure out how complex it was going to be to do the migration. Yeah, that is one of the reasons that hinder our customer modernizing their commercial databases. Yeah, it definitely was. And in this case, what they found with schema conversion tool was that very few of their procedures were able to be automatically converted. Hmm. In fact, they had, of the 2,500, about 1,900 had simple actions that needed to be uh, acted upon, but about half of those could be automatically converted. So between the automatic conversions and these ones, only about 1,100 of the 1,500 could be automatically converted. Then they had somewhere on the order of 150 that require medium actions. So this is something that requires some knowledge of both database platforms, but not deep, deep knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then there were about 400 complex actions. And this is really where most organizations struggle in their migrations. I see. Not only are these complex actions gonna require deep knowledge of both database platforms, but they also oftentimes hide underlying complexity because the schema conversion tool simply can't understand the logic that's within those procedures. And so it could be 10 hours, it could be 100 hours, and it's very hard for our teams to know that up front. I see. So shall we go through your architecture then? Yes, absolutely. So what we found is most customers, this one included, don't want to take a year-long project and spend a million dollars or more in order to translate from their current platform onto a new one. There's just not an ROI for them. But at the same time, Kalen was executing about 100 generative AI projects. And we found that this database transformation looks really similar to our most successful ones in that it's difficult and time consuming to do the translation across the platforms. But at the end, verifying that you got it right is not as difficult. So what we did is we built a tool that we call the SQL Polyglot. And with that tool, we've been able to take that year long migration and take it down to about four months of time, so about a 3x improvement on average. I see, that is amazing. But we have to dive deeper into all of the AWS services we use here today. Yeah, let's do that. So you first start with the source platform. So that can be a 
Microsoft SQL Server instance. That could be code in a GitHub repository or in Visual Studio Code or wherever you happen to have the SQL code that needs to be translated. From there, the key is that we upload it into an S3 bucket. And from there, that triggers the rest of our serverless architecture. From that architecture, we start with a translation step. So in translate, what we do is we leverage the power of generative AI in order to actually take the source code and convert it onto the target platform. Now we use a simple queue service in order to buffer because you may have 2,500 or 10,000 different objects you're trying to convert. And then we use a Lambda function both to call out to Amazon Bedrock and to provide that concurrency limit so that we're not overwhelming the Bedrock service. Now, the large language models in Amazon Bedrock already have an innate understanding of database code across many different database platforms. And that's simply because there's so much SQL code available on the internet for them to train on. Mm -hmm. So in that very first step, our translation is written out into another S3 bucket. And many times that'll actually be a correctly translated procedure, even for some of those more complex actions we talked about before. But that's not all the time. So we also have an analysis step here. And in that analyze step, we are taking the procedures that have been translated and we're going to run a few processes on top so that we understand what translations took place and how should we follow up with those on the, you know, both the manual actions or feeding more information to the AI. I see. The first step in feeding more information to the AI is to run what we call the compile step. And in the compile step, what we're doing is, you know, compile is not a true term here. We're taking the stored procedure code and we're actually installing it on an instance of Amazon Aurora, in this case, to run that PostgreSQL database. And if that stored procedure is able to be created and then run with very basic parameters, we know that we have code that is at least ready to execute. And that is, you know, akin to the compilation step in traditional coding. Now, if not, we go back to the analyze step and record in the DynamoDB database the information that we're going to need in order to either manually or by providing it back to Amazon Bedrock, let the LLM take another pass at that conversion. I see. That is amazing. I can see that the solution alleviates the pain of manual work. Mm -hmm. But the customer may have a questions around how can we make sure all of the automation work as expected? Yeah, that was absolutely essential to this process. So we have an automated validation step that comes next. And that's really where I was talking about the data validation being easier than the actual transformation. Okay, let's talk about that. So the data validation step runs right after the procedures get translated. And so this bucket right here is the same translation bucket that we just showed on the prior slide. And it starts in three parts. So first is determining the parameters that need to be called. So I mentioned before sort of procedures, but this actually works for functions, views, triggers, or really any other database object that contains your SQL code. And in those procedures, what you have is many different versions of parameters that are needed in order to actually get all of the different code executed over time. And so what we do is we store the potential parameters in a DynamoDB table and then we trigger an Amazon ECS Fargate cluster. Now these procedures may take up to an hour to run. We don't know ahead of time. So we need that long running process here. We use Fargate's serverless scale up, scale down in order to manage the compute time. We're not charging the customer for extra time, but we're able to call the stored procedure on the new translated Aurora platform and on the Microsoft SQL platform or whatever the source database might have been, and then compare the results under the many different parameter combinations that we detected in the prior step. So by executing that, once we know that the same inputs produce the same outputs across both databases, we know that we've done this just right. And then here's the really cool part is, now that we can verify that what we have is correct SQL code, we can actually use large language models again to optimize the code so that you have more efficient sort procedure execution on the new platform, oftentimes more efficient on the new platform than you had previously 
on the legacy platform. And that's been one of the absolute keys to really hitting those migration timelines that we're talking about before. I see. That's amazing. I can see that your team has put a lot of the efforts to address the challenges of database modernization and optimization. So the next question would be, where can we go to learn more about SQL Polygon? Well, we're going to have some links in the notes here that take you to detailed information on SQL Polyglot. But if you want to talk to Kaylin about this more, you can always find us at kaylin.com and click Contact Me. Thank you. This brings us to the end of that video. Thank you for your time, and we will see you in the next. Thank you.